Welcome to Pillars of Eternity 2 Dead Fire. I'm your host, Probability of Success Zero, and this is episode one in our new playthrough series of this fantasy RPG. Now, before you do anything else, I'd really appreciate it if you did that like, subscribe, and notification bell so that you too can stay up to date with my content as it comes out. So, you might be noticing over the next couple of weeks a few new games appearing. I've decided to sort of branch out rather than just focus primarily on Imperion. But don't worry, Imperion will be returning. I'm just going to sort of uh, shake it up a bit and have some other content as well. So, Pillars of Eternity is a fancy RPG as I've previously stated. It's actually the second game in a new franchise that was started back in 2015. As you can see on the screen right now, apparently there's going to be a third game called uh, Avowed. And that's going to be essentially based in the Pillars of Eternity world. And it's going to be a bit like Skyrim. Right, so we're not going to be playing Pillars of Eternity 1. So if you haven't uh, got an idea of what's going on, with that storyline, I would suggest going on YouTube and sort of finding someone who's done a playthrough of that and checking out what that particular game was about. Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire is actually a direct sequel, so it actually continues the story on. So we are going to be getting a little bit of a backstory as to what happened in the previous game, but I'm as not as clued up as you unfortunately so we are going to be playing catch up through this playthrough series so let's just crack on and do that so clicking on the new game we've got two ways of playing the game we can either do real time with pause mode or turn based mode now I, I like my turn based but I also like to keep it you know flowing and have the ability to kind of pause I think that's a very good way of sort of um keeping the flow of the game going so we're going to choose that the real time option we're going to continue um i'm not going to change it off its default settings so it's recommending this relaxed so we're going to click on relaxed and start game and now we're going to watch the cutscene. Aora, a world where mortals live, die, and are reborn through the turning of the wheel. The cycle of reincarnation watched over by the gods and made possible through pillars of a mystical substance known as Audra. Five years ago, you traveled from your home to the Deerwood, a nation that had waged war against the incarnated god of light Aethys, resulting in his destruction. The country suffered from a plague of hollowborn, infants born without souls, that many believed was punishment for killing a god. In an ancient, secluded ruin, you witnessed a secret ritual that inadvertently transformed you into a watcher, one who can see and speak with souls. The ritual also gave you horrible visions, waking nightmares of a past life that threatened your sanity. To put them to rest, you pursued the man who had led the ritual, a seemingly immortal agent of the gods, known as Theos Ix Arcanon. With divine assistance, you confronted and defeated Theos ending your visions and resolving the Hollowborn Crisis. In so doing, you also learned the great secret that Theos had protected, that the ancient empire of Anguith had transformed themselves into gods. Your visions finally put to rest, you retired to the castle of Cadnua, built atop a massive statue of pure Audra where you ruled in relative peace and prosperity. Right, okay. 
That's a lot to take in. Made a nice story. You fixing up that old keep? Lifting the curse? Must have told it a hundred times. But something got to gnaw at me. Thinking the spirits there weren't really at rest. But maybe the gods weren't that, finished. That's a bit this. weird. Don't that look a bit like a hand around that that castle? Uh, what? Oh, it is a hand. Okay. When my God came back. Holy crap. Last the trouble dreams. Sooner or later, we all have to wake up. Wow. Okay, so well. You wake to a sleepless world. The in between of life and death. So we sort All of got. Your memories. You have been here before. So we kind of got owned right off the bat. So apparently we were living in a nice castle on top of a giant's hand. And the giant woke up and kind of crushed our entire castle and killed everyone. And now we're dead. Brilliant start. Well, it was nice while it lasted, guys. I'm just going to, like, end the recording here. <laughs> so, <laughs> what a way to begin the game by dying. Okay, we're we going left. We're we going left. Okay, left seems to lead nowhere. Okay, let's go right then. Can we move this camera? All oh, right, so this game is isometric, which means we do have a. Ooh. You have seen past the shroud. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. Okay, I don't know who these people are. They don't seem to be able to interact. I'm assuming there's some kind of souls, spirits. Right, so uh, isometric basically means we have a fixed point of view. I don't think we can. Um, A watcher sees souls, knows their pasts, and the souls see them back. Right, okay. So these are memories. I assume they're from the previous game. A dubious honour, inheriting a fortress both broken and cursed. Yeah, cursed is definitely the way I'd describe it, given what just happened. Some could say what we uh, played into their power? hands. Hmm? A higher power, a rewarder of good deeds and punisher of the wicked. Yeah, it sounds about right for a god. A decent one anyway. The gods aren't real, but something else entirely. Something created by people. Well, they sound like they were clued up. Okay, should we rename this to Walking and Simulator? Did you consider that these were things you were never meant to understand? That their comprehension is beyond you? Oh, we seem to be getting to the end of the path. Let the world see. Let them decide what to do. We're heading into the lights, guys. We're heading into the light. The wheel has turned again, Watcher. Come. An aged dwarf shares this strange floating platform with you. 
His face is creased by so many wrinkles that his features lie buried amid shadowy pockets of skin. Still, Ew. the dwarf's well-practiced habits have left telltale tracks of a welcoming rictus across his visage. I assume that means smile. You can see his smile coming before it blooms, reshaping the dwarf's face from a hanging sack of flesh into something resembling an oddly carved merry gourd replete with unhealthy bumps and discolored splotches. Right, okay, that's a very, very wonderful description of someone's face. I assume we're meant to go through that door, so let's do that. Thank you, sir. Oh, he's following us. Oh, well, okay. For a dwarf, he's actually quite tall. Can we talk to him? The creases of the dwarf's face tighten into a smile as he gives you a courteous nod. Apparently that's all the interaction we're going to get from him. Another hand. I'm not liking this. I'm not liking giant hands holding things because the last time we saw that, we died. Who are you? Sit. Please. Uh, can we run away? We're just going to ignore the tutorial. Thank you for joining us, Watcher of Cadnua. The gaunt woman seated at the table is clad in time-worn black armor that seems too massive for her to move in. A pale, slender neck rises from the gorget, topped by a hollow face. The milky skin stretched across it is delicate and translucent, like parchment that has been scraped clean too many times. Ew. She is preoccupied with the arrangement of cards on the table between you. With each movement, her armor squeaks and groans as though bearing an incredible weight. She places a final card, gives a nod of satisfaction, and raises her eyes to meet yours. Your brush with the Divine has drained you of your powers, fractured your memories. Look upon these cards. They represent the courses of your life. You alone know best how they flowed. Arrange them to fit what you remember. Right, okay, so this, I assume, leads into the character creation mode. Okay, that's a lot. Uh... So we've got to pick a history, uh, survival of, uh, uh, okay. Right, okay, so this is meant to sort of like imply what we did in the previous game. Okay, um... Well, I think bad sounds, well, bad, so we're not going to go with that. Uh, dark times, again, bad, keeper of secrets, mm, uh, survival of the fittest, fair and balanced, or benevolent soul. We are going to go with Survival of the Fittest. Yeah, sounds about right. So we're going to use that selected history. Let's just have a look at one of the others. Oh, 
Okay, so one sounds like um, a goody goody two shoes ending. Oh, what's the dark times? Oh, no, no, we're definitely not doing that. We we consigned the uh, souls of the Hollowborn to oblivion. <laughs> we didn't do that. Yep, I think bad. Huh, okay, so we're going to go with number one simply because i'm a goody goody two shoes and i probably would have done that with the return the souls of the hollow born um to the to the children that were cursed and i would have been going out of my way to be helpful towards everyone i'd met because that's the kind of play i would have uh, been so we're gonna go with that so that pretty much uh Does everything works appear out to be in order yep good welcome to the beyond I am Bera. One half, anyway. She points a finger in the direction of the dwarf who led you here. Though the movement is slight, her gauntlet squeaks like a rusty hinge. The dwarf's rictus returns as he nods in the woman's direction. Tell me, do you remember when we last met? No, I don't. She places a card on the table, showing a tall tower. The gods' constellations are arrayed around it in the sky. You remember now, the Hall of Stars in Twin Elms, where you spoke with the gods. You came to that tower seeking our aid. You chose to pledge your services to other gods. Still, a pledge unmade stands fairer in this court than a pledge broken. She places a card in the middle of the arrangement. A bell tower with no bell. Her fingertips slowly drag away from the card, faintly creaking as they retreat across the table. Ooh. You had need of the gods once before. Now it seems we have need of you. Okay. The being that occupied Odnua's statue beneath your castle was the dead god, Aeothus. Of this, we are certain. What we do not know is what his intentions are. Okay, so it was a god who killed us, not a giant. Though Aeothus stole a large fragment of your soul, you were strong enough to survive the onslaught and enter the in-between. He tried to steal our soul. What a dick. You and he are still connected. He has chosen a body made of living Atra, perfused with the power of thousands of souls, including yours. It should be little difficulty for an experienced Watcher to find him. So, the obvious question, am I dead? I think the answer to that is obviously yes. Uh, we could ask them, why don't you do it yourself? Uh, and I'm not going to do... not going anywhere near that thing again. Eh, nah, am I no, dead? But neither is your body truly alive. Your lungs draw breath, your heart pumps blood, but your flesh is as soulless as a hollowborn. Oh. That is, until I return you. Damn, so he pulled our soul right out of our body and left our still living body on the ground. That's nice of him. I thought he crushed us to death. She delicately places a card upright on the table. The art depicts souls flowing out of a pillar of Audra. Yeah, that's a good enough reason to hunt the guy down. Nah, not really the response I would give. Right, so we're going to go with number one. We I like revenge. It is my business to know. 322 in Cadnua and your surrounding lands. Oh, damn. That's a bit of a death toll. Their souls remain in Aether still. You have the power to save them. 
Serve me and I will return you to your body. Or don't, and return to the wheel. Right, so if we... Ooh, I'm interested. What happens if I say I'll take the wheel? The wheel being the cycle that essentially leads to reincarnation. Hmm. I really want to see what happens if we go to the wheel. No, we better not. Good. Before you return to Aora as my herald, you must remember who you were. The last whisper of life in death. For a moment, the sockets of her eyes darken, leaving the pits of a death's head gazing out at you. Oh, okay. When you can picture your own face, the beyond will lead you back to your own kind, to the world of mortals. Okay. Start from scratch. Right, so we could import to the base from our previous character or we can do one from scratch. So we're going to do one from scratch. Going to go for a male. Oh, that, oh, hey, that's a pretty good character model, to be fair. Very detailed. Okay, next. Uh, race. Oh, God, why are they? That's a Keith. Okay, so it's some kind of Atlantean man. So they're a strong race of uh, mermen. Well, we know what a dwarf is. We know what elf is. Godlike. Holy crap, what the hell is that? Seriously, what what the hell is that? That's that's as alien as alien could be. The godlike are children of the Kif, the civilized races who have been blessed with the physical aspects associated with the gods, though some do not consider it a blessing. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, these aspects may take many forms and often come with mystical powers all right okay so hmm or oh, we got humans or oh, we got Orlan oh, what <laughs> seriously what what is that it's like a mini werewolf. Jesus. And he's got, he's got flapping ears. Right. So we're not playing that. Um, <laughs> oh my God. I mean, that, that is, that is like something, something else. Uh, we're going to play human because, you know, humans are pretty basic. We're probably going to encounter these other races throughout the game anyway um my god that is bad let's just have a look at that one see if death god like by god okay moon god okay mate so the death one is really really bad okay let's back away from that let's just go through that one a second Okay, let's just have a quick look at that one. Right, it's with different elves. Oh yeah, wood elf and pale elf. Let's click next. Meadow folk, ocean folk, savannah folk. will be meadow right okay next uh we want to go single class right so what the heck? well barbarian is fighter uh major role uh role crowd control minor role defender okay 
support and crowd control. What's a cipher? All right. So they're, they're manipulating the soul and psyche of people using magic. Okay. Druid. Well, we know what druids are. Um, fighter. Uh, that's a defender and a striker. Monk, striker and defender. That's basically the invert of that. What's druid? Chanter. Basically, is that like supposed to be a type of sorcerer? Yeah, I think that's a type of sorcerer, chanter. Yeah, resource phrases which invoke magic. Right, okay. Uh, monk, paladin, support, and defender. The question is, what is the difference between a fighter and a paladin, right, uh, and a priest? That's just like your cleric, healer, ranger. Rogue, okay, we know what rogue is. Right, we're gonna go with paladin because we've already picked a goody goody two shoes, guys. So we're gonna continue with that. Oh, subclass, right? Uh, bleak walkers. Okay. Right, so these guys are just like your proper smiters. They go in there and just absolutely just destroy things. The best way to get rid of evil and stop wars is to kill everyone on the battlefield. <laughs> I kind of like that mentality. That's a good way to um, be a paladin. Very unpaladin of them. What's this one? Right, so let's just have a look at that. Flames of Devotion. And these guys have got Lay of Hands. Gold Pack Knights. Oh, I like Knights. Okay, I like that. So these guys are mercenaries. Shield bearers, while these guys lay it of hands. Uh... And these guys... Right, we are going to be the Gold Pack Knights. Since I like the idea of being a mercenary type. So we get to choose one. Um, okay. So we can either heal ourselves with a lay of hands. Or what's this one? Oh no, we're going to go for damage, of course. So this allows us to light our sword and hit people with fire damage. So we're going to go with that. 
Right, so they're suggesting uh, resolve is our primary asset, our primary attribute, and intelligence, constitution, and might. So what we'll do is we'll buff that by two. One, one, one. One, two again. One, one, one. Two again. One, one, one. That's all our attributes assigned. Right, intelligence. So we're not going to get anything for 13. If we drop that by one and put that to 18. Fearless. Right, resolve. Might, 14. Right, constitution. We'll make that 15. Can we get... I'm trying to see... If we can balance this out. So I've got a 15% damage and healing of 15%. Constitution, 10. And health. We're not going to go up to those numbers. Our, our, our brackets seem to be 5, 10, 15 and then 20. So we're not, these are average at the minute. That is still average, unfortunately. But that is just gone up into strong, which is why I pushed it up by one. That one isn't going anywhere. So we might as well take three out of that. Oh no, because that pushes that up to 24. Right, we're going to go with that. We're going to go with that mix. So 15 might, 12 constitution, 10, 10, 15, uh, sorry, 12 for intellect and 18 on resolve since that's our primary attribute. Right, where are we from? Okay, so. Old Empire. Well, we're supposed to be uh, a Meadows folk, so. Oh no, we're not that. No, we're not that. The living, the living lands, what's that? Okay, so these give us bonuses as well. Right, hang on. Right, so if we got out to 19, hang on, let's go back a second. So we've got that, that's on 15. So if we could get that up to one more, wipe that up to 19 and go, that's resolve. So we need something on resolve. Resolve is the first one. So if we pick that, that makes that attribute 20. Okay, we're going to do that. Is there any others? Ah, oh, okay, that's resolve as well. Right, we're going to go with that one then, top one, since that makes no sense because that's the Savannah people, the people of um, Savannah folk and the Orlan residents. We're going to pick that one. So that will give us 20 resolve. What was your job? Um, mercenary, definitely, because that is basically part of the backstory to being a gold pack knight. Available weapons, so we can pick two. So we've got to have, ooh, got to be some kind of shield, I think. Tool shield. Right click the details. Right, so we're going to go with that. And 
half sword. Why half sword? That's 13 to 19 damage. Hang on, close that down. That's 13 to 19. Saber. Yeah, same. Rapier. No. Axe. Ooh, we could do an axe. We're going to just go with the bog standard sword. So that's our two weapon types, shield and sword. Is there any other weapon types? No, it's just those two. We could have gone with a gun. But shield and a gun don't quite make sense. That's like a flail. Club. Battle axe. Hatchet. Mace. Dagger. We're not going to use daggers, are we? Let's have a look at that. 13 to 19 for a spear. Stiletto. Right, we're not going to use that. Could have gone with a war hammer. But look at the damage. It's less. So we're actually picked the best weapon, I think. Attack 0 0.7. What's the 0 0.7 in recovery time? Four. No crit on that one. Ooh. Now we're going to go sword and shield. We're a standard paladin. Right. Portrait. Okay. Now we get to pick our face. There's a lot of faces here, so we've got to focus on picking a human one. Nope, that guy looks gimpy. Alright, so <laughs> it's going to be quite hard actually. You saw this guy here kind of looks like a dwarf. Yeah, we're going to go with the standard face. Oh, we could just go for the, the faceless one. Yeah, we're going to go for the helmet. That way it doesn't really matter. Right, uh, clothing colour. Right, um... Skin colour, uh, we're going to go pale. Not that pale. That's about average. Right, so we'll go for slightly paler. Right, hair colour, we're going to go for dark brown. He says. Don't seem to be changing much. Is that his eyebrows? Ah, yeah, so that was his eyebrows. Eye colour. Let's go for green. Right, so we need to match the colours there. No, that's ginger. get it it's the secondary color right okay yep if we do that there we go all right okay primary and secondary colors oh 
Oh, that's quite good. So we'll go with that sort of black and brown. Okay, so we're going to go for the head now. I mean, the colours of the clothing don't really matter. I think we'll be changing them soon enough anyway. Yeah, I've just got grey on that. Okay, head. Face two. No, old. Face, oh God, no. We'll do that. Okay, hair. Nope. There's a lot of options here. Flop. Oh, what is that? No. <laughs> okay, mate. That's a definite no. What about that one? Eh, it's not too bad. That looks a bit weird. Right, so we're going to go with... Where was it? Not that one. <coughs> um, Not that comb over um where was it right we're gonna go with that standard one uh face definitely gonna have some kind of beard let's have a look nope no just too much that's not bad. Hmm. That makes him look like a werewolf. Right, that's a bit silly. That's a bit more realistic. So it's that one or... So we're going to go for that one. Now, voice. Nothing will slip past me. Cocky. After him. Stand together. Let us end this. Charge. No. Bring them down. I'll teach you a lesson. <sighs> nice and slow. Huh? Follow me. Ugh. Let's go. Steady does it. Yeah, we're going to go with that one. Yeah, we're going to go with that one. Not going to look at any others. His pose is set. Let's just have a quick look at uh, eye colour again. Yeah, that's fine. Go through that. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Oh no, no, we can't do it. So we're going to call him Pos Zero. There we go. My God, there's a lot of options available to uh, customize in your character in this game. Right, so we're starting off with a couple of skills. So we've got Arcane, Athletics, Diplomacy, religion, obviously, because we're a paladin and streetwise. We should have, yes, so we've now got 20 resolve. We've got 15 might, so that plan to buff up the resolve is maxed out. So let's click next. Hey. Go forth now, Watcher, as my herald. Know that I do not give you this title lightly. When the time comes, you will have the power to reveal the souls that cling to you. To open the gateway from the in-between to the waking world. Okay, let's continue. Find Learn his plans. When I have cause to talk to you, I will summon you. 
Ah, se nós... Com uma gestura de sua mão, você sente uma dor em o que seria o seu coração. A dor continua, intrudindo mais profundo na sua alma. Olhando down, você vê um pequeno lump de darkness roiling within you. A darkness lingers there, but the pain abates and fades entirely within the span of a few seconds. A chime. Do not fear, Harold. It will not harm you unless you choose to cross me. I trust it will not come to that. Her gauntleted hand gestures to the dwarf, hovering nearby. The dwarf nods, contorts his face with his odd smile, and gestures to a new door. Okay. Thank you, sir. Can we loot this place? No, apparently not. Oh, this is really weird. Okay, we're walking around in circles there. Oh. I think that's this. Okay. I think we just possessed our own body now. Oh yeah, immediately the goes into the stoic stance. Waking after a fitful drunken sleep. The rocking of the ship sends pain jolting through your limbs. Crashing waves hammer inside your skull. Adair watches over your body with a glazed look, taking long, even tokes from his pipe. At the first movement of your chest, he starts. His gasp, mid-puff, sends him coughing and straining for breath. No, there's no way. You're awake. What are you doing awake? How are you feeling? Who are you? Me? You don't remember? Adair points at his face, which he seems to be arranging into his most recognizable expression. Receiving no response, he shrugs. I'm the captain of this boat. And I was real big back in Deerwood. At this keep called Cadnua. I was famous. And I was what you'd call a watcher. I'd go around talking to dead folks and creeping out just about everyone who saw. He holds up his hands with fingers curled to mimic claws. I thought that was this. You, you're just some farmer. Likes to follow me around. Take most of the beating for me when we get attacked. Yeah, he's mocking us. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll all come back. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was you who was going around being a creepy watcher. I get mixed up easily. That fortress was mine. I remember that. Anyway, you didn't answer my question. How you feeling? Alive. Alive's a big improvement. I hate to cast a pall over your recovery, but I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. Uh, we've lost the castle. The voice echoes from inside the bust. The remains of the steward of Cad Nua. Okay, that's a nice little uh, feature. Right, okay. Had Nua has been destroyed. Aethus possessed the statue of Maros Nua and rose from the ground, consuming the souls of all nearby. 
Nice. It is only by the exceptional strength of your soul that you survived. And even then, just barely. The further Aethos withdrew, the weaker you became. We chartered this ship and followed him to the Deadfire Archipelago. Right, okay, that would explain the name of the game. I know not how, but it seems he has retained a piece of your soul. And proximity to it has brought you back. Remain silent. Misfortune's brewing topside. We... Migrants fires the captain stirs. An older man with ale sour breath rubs his bloodshot eyes and stares at you. Engrim, the smell of drink on your breath could wake the very dead. Now what's this about? Pirates. They're demanding parley with you, Captain. It's a good job we just woke up. I know this is asking a lot, but you better arm yourself and get on deck. Should be some gear in there. He indicates a nearby wardrobe. Right, so I've just woken up from the dead and first thing I have to deal with is bleeding pirates. Awesome. Let's get in the closet. Careful I'll say that. Uh, take it up. Right. Now make some use of it. Right. Equip items, I assume. A drag and drop. There we go. I'm confused. Right click. Oh, you put in your weapon slots, not in your hand. Right, okay. And then hopefully. Hmm, let's just have a quick look at that. That gives armor rating of three. That gives us armor rating of seven. So we're definitely switching out for that. Wow, what an improvement. And what's that? Prepared meal. Oh, and a shield. I am. Right, that took a bit of clicking away. So these are weapon sets. So that's our primary. That's our offhand. Deflection 12. Right, okay. So that should be it. The pirates of Deadfire are notorious. I suggest you deal with them quickly. Right, let's get out there then. Can we talk to that guy? What's that? Right, okay, we're going to ignore that. Let's just get the hell out. Oh, that looks good. Well, what have we here? A little snoop, lost and alone in the storm. I'll be taking your ship now. Uh, you no, you won't mind. be. I've got a feeling I'll be taking yours. Well, at least he asked. I am a gentleman of fortune. Give her up easy, and I'll see you get a swift death. It'll be bloody and agonizing, sure. But at least it'd be quick. Uh, that's a swift death then, mate. So, let, let's have a... <laughs> I like that last option, attack, fire all cannons, aim at the mouthy one. Um... <laughs> Must be <laughs> nice to get paid to talk so much. Um... <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that. Oh my god. I've got to do the first one then. Just antagonize. And you're the one who'll be paying me. Ain't that just lovely? Listen up, mates. I'm off to spear me a bigger fish. 
one with sharper teeth like. I'm trusting you lot not to cock this up. Don't damage the sloop when you take it. Play with the crew if you'd like, but don't bring me any prisoners. None that are alive. Well, the prisoner has to be alive in order to be considered a prisoner, otherwise we're a corpse, you dunce. You heard, Benwick! Off! Right, um... Right, so we're going to do that. What's that? Flame. Oh, we've got to do a flame of devotion. And immediately attack that person. What's that one? Oh, we'll do that next. And what's that? That's uh, second wind. That's just shield. Oh, shield wall. Just this. Let's crack on then. Okay, so they're hurt. Can we do that again? Defend the ship. All right, so we, if we do that. Then we assign it. Oh, they're dead. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that onto that one and make them terrified. There we go. That seemed to work nicely. They got petrified. Pirates, it's just that one. Okay. Oh, okay. A bit bloody. Oh, wow, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, we're going to rescue the guy because the crate is secondary. Oh my god. So we've just crashed the ship anyway. Right, so we've just sank our ship on the shore by pursuing the, uh, the god. But at least we're alive. Oh, you've been getting a lot of sleep so far on this trip. I'd have woke you, but you look so peaceful with your face in the sand. <laughs> Cheeky blighter. If you're worried about the ship, you can stop worrying. It's wrecked right over there. <laughs> so far, it's just you and me and the chair lady over there. Right, please tell me we've got some other survivors. It's a relief to see you awake, my lord. 
I worried you were in for another long sleep. <laughs> I hate boats. It's right behind you. Unfortunately, I believe we'll be needing the Defiant yet. Unless you mean to settle down on the island for good. Well, there's a thought. I'm afraid I won't be much assistance in that regard. And not to doubt Master Adair's capacity, but even he would need supplies. That's true. Steak, especially. Yes, because that's going to help. Patching the hull is only the start. You're going to need help getting the Defiant out to sea again. And a crew, for that matter. Let's see about the other survivors. And somehow we got to get the ship repaired. I don't want to be paddling out of here on a salvage raft. For now, I'd say your best bet is to find some sign of civilization. If nothing else, we may be able to hire on a shipwright. My lord, if it is not too taxing, could you explain how it came to pass that you were returned to us? <laughs> okay, let's do sure. that one. I suppose if any mission could be considered special, it'd have to be this one. A perilous endeavor indeed. Castle or no castle, you are still my lord, and I will aid you to the best of my ability. Oh, thank you very much. Well, I suppose we better get a move on. Right, so... He's going to be... A fighter, because I think that's what he's supposed to be anyway. That's his default tick. So many souls lost. Surely someone else survived. Oh God, they're all dead. Oh, there's a soul. That's convenient. Let's go this way, quickly. Help! Somebody! Per con Blanca! Okay. I heard some voice. How the hell did we get, get up there? So we're going to climb up. Right, okay. And can we talk to it? Yeah. You're looking better, Casita. That or I'm worse off than I thought. <laughs> It's my leg, Matiko. It hurts even worse than it looks. Right, so we're going to, um,
I was a stubborn Postenaga. I was trying to fasten this mess down when we struck shore. Barrel rolled right over my leg. <laughs> Everything we've been through and I'm nearly done in by a cask of rum. <laughs> Funny thing, it's hard to see much from the underside of the barrel. Yeah, that's true. Right, so we're going to carry them back down. Quite romantic, Casita. I'll try not to hold it against you if you drop me. Hopefully we're not going to drop them. And we were successful. There must be other survivors out there. On it. Right, okay, so we've managed to get someone else. Ah, uh, there's a soul there, let's talk to them. Hope the rest of those sodden bastards made it. Apparently. Uh, looks like we're the only three who made it by lots of things. Let's go back up there, see if we can... Um, see if there's anything up here to salvage. Apparently not. Oh, hello. On it. Oh, hello. Got central hostile. Sui. Wow, that was quite devastating. He is well and truly down. Can we loot the corpse? Apparently not. Right. There was a soul walking around here. Huh? Hey, fancy seeing you here. I can't see much of anything, really, apart from you. Just endless gray. What happened? Storm? That's strange. You'd think a man would recall a storm. It's like, it's like someone cut away a part of my memory. There's just this big black hole. It's weird. I thought death would be different. Big light and so on. But I don't see anything at all. Just you. Oh. Suppose that sounds nice enough. I'll follow you then, shall I? you're stuck with that yep watcher over here there we go We've got no survivor i've got it it is good to see you well watcher i believe the boars were hoping for easy meat so that's the guy we saved earlier on the boat the bosun Beadle, is in that cave over there ran in after a boar stubborn old dwarf I was able to calm one of the boars with a spell 
For a time, at least. By the time I was through, I had lost sight of Beadal. I remained here, hoping he would return quickly. He has not. After we made landfall, you mean? I woke and Beadal was close by, swearing fit to bring Andra's wrath upon us a second time. We began to search for supplies. I came over this way in hopes of gathering some of that blood moss over there. I thought it might be of use. I imagine the boars had the same idea. I will make for the campfire. I must get this pistol cleaned if it's going to be of any use. Be careful in there, Captain. Okay, so that's two crew members. Oh, I like that. Going through the water slows you down. Oh, there's some more people over there. Let's have a quick look. Spy! Magran here! My flame burns yet! Is that you? You woke just in time for the fun. Fighting off motherless raiders one moment, flung into the freezing depths of Andra's bosom the next. Aye, Magran learns us poor bastards that a little excitement's good for the heart. Some others might think that blasphemy. But when Magran hears it, Captain, oh, she knows you're filled with a fire. Well, it's true. Can we go back on the ship now? <laughs> you're still drunk, aren't you? Kindling watcher. That's unkind. You're the one decided to pluck this wean from the wilds of Air Glanforth. Blame that stone steward of yours for bringing the furry maid along. Uncle Engram, you promised me ale. <laughs> Later, sweetie. Uncle Engram's thirsty too. Right, okay, so I've got a pair of drunkards. Think guys this would be the perfect place to end this particular episode i hope you've enjoyed the introduction to that i do know the character creation was slightly long-winded but there were an awful lot of options and uh i think before we go into this sea cave and continue this playthrough this would be an ideal place to kind of stop so to recap what's happened is we've uh, returned from the dead after having our keep destroyed by awakening god uh, we've been recruited by all the gods to seek out this uh, god statue who's walking around destroying and consuming souls all over the place and to determine what exactly his plan is and in doing so we have lost our ship which has run aground after coming across some pirates so there's a lot going on there so in the next episode we're going to continue our playthrough try and figure out how to get the defiant back up and running and out to sea again and hopefully recruit a couple of uh, our surviving crew members so for now thank you for watching and in a bit